I what what I'm looking to do is pretty high level. Um, like who is this supposed to be for? Uh, just like most everybody, or like highly technical people, or. Well, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not even sure like what kind of technical things exist. So maybe we can start from from the broad strokes, um, kind of like what what we can do. Because, uh, for example, yes, oh, I would have this. Wait, 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 wait. So, so first, uh, yeah. So recording is on. So first of all, uh, the Kana uh, is already integrated in our infrastructure for like four months or something. Mm -hmm. And if you'll go to um, our GitHub, you will find it in, in Coronavirus infrastructure. Um, I will send link uh, to Zoom. Let me check. Okay, so that one. So uh, there is a Docker Compose with uh, all services and uh, the Kana is one of them. So it means that you can get the Kana up and running uh, locally on your computer or if you'd like, you, you can run it on, on VM. There is no difference. And uh, because the way how we uh, implemented it, uh, you know, there is uh, tr traffic and traffic is HTTPS uh, proxy and load, load balancer. So basically, it means that uh, it's possible to use it both for uh, development and production uh, services. And I don't know, if you will open Docker Compose, uh, you will see it's connected to other tools also. And um, for example, our pipeline, LP pipeline for Core 19, it can directly uh, communicate with the Kana. It can send pieces of text from uh, core 19 to the can and other people can do something, right? So I don't know if I have uh, permissions to share screen. Let me check. Okay, can, can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you'll go to this repository uh, and after to Docker Compose, you will see, uh, yeah. So you will see a lot of services that already integrated with the Kana. And Indra is here. So there is also possibility to send uh, Indra statements to the Kana for further processing. And uh, uh, we can label some entity and uh, we can do a lot of fun things. And um, well, other things also. Um, so there's also Elastic um, available. And Jupiter and Sparkle Endpoint, and Kibana, and uh, whatever you want. And the last one is Dokana. So if you'll try just, just to clone uh, this repository and run this Docker Compose app, you will get it. And uh, um, you will see. So you should specify domain name, uh, or it can be just localhost. So it will be dokana.localhost in, in this case. And you will see this nice uh, website. And uh, I believe uh, default login is admin admin. And uh, after you can uh, just go inside. So I already have example that, uh, yeah. So I just go to projects. And here you can see we have seven projects and some examples. So last one actually uh, is our experiment with integration of Court 19 collection with the Kana. So um, I think I've shared a notebook, but it's also uh, available on GitHub. So if I'll go to uh, AI uh, experiments, uh, let me check how it's called uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Oh, AI annotations. So there is a notebook and uh, yeah, I will, I will also put on the chat uh, this link. Um, so basically the idea that uh, you can send any uh, JSON um, with full text and uh, you can specify, uh, of course, some, some extra things. And uh, in this notebook, it's already connected to our uh, Core 19 collection on, on Elastic. But 
this Jason can, can come also from, uh, let's say, research questions that uh, we discussed yesterday, or it can be any kind of Jason, but you should actually convert it to the format that uh, the Kana can understand. So, um, yeah, it's quite straightforward, I think, and it's not it will not take too much time to understand how it works. So basically you can get any kind of content in, in the can and uh, this is how it looks like. So this sentence from uh, some, some paper uh, from court 19 and uh, basically, uh, yeah, let me check if it works. So basically you, you can uh, select any piece uh, any fragment of text and uh, you can assign some label and uh, we can get it back from the Kana API and uh, actually it's uh, like a human in a loop it's feedback from user on what we got uh, after automatic labeling so I think from this place uh, Alex can explain what he did exactly what kind of data he uploaded and uh, how actually he managed to make it work. So I will stop sharing screen. Oh, it's Amsterdam, it's raining every day. I can share my screen if you want. Uh, yeah. To jump into a project. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you know what? Just one second, it kicked me out here. You gotta get, okay. All right. Uh, I got it, I got it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Did, did you have a question or? I, I, I was just gonna, uh, I, I can wait until you're done, that's okay. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Are you guys able to see my screen here? Yep. The admin. Okay, cool. So, um, so here, this is kind of the landing page after you log in, um, and you'll have a bunch of projects here. You can create one. We've only really used it for, uh, sequence labeling, which is, uh, their Docono's term for, for, um, uh, named entity recognition, uh, labeling. Um, you know, I'll put that in there and choose the options you'd like. So once you do that, uh, you'll get a project like this. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is edit the data. Um, you'll come in, you won't have anything in here. Uh, you can import your data here and it'll give you a few different options. Um, and just, you'll just choose the one that uh, pertains to the format that, that uh, you developed either through Slava's um, notebook or uh, or your own means. Um, so that'll take care of the data set. And the next thing you'll want to do is, um, is develop labels. And so these are, um, so for, for this project, uh, I was annotating um, sample sizes in paper because that's what we wanted to develop a model that would extract. Um, and so not only did we have sample sizes, but we also had a few other uh, different methods that we kind of ended up developing. So we realized that uh, sometimes they would break out sample size, for example, um, and, or, or enrollment counts. So not only did we need, um, you know, they would say we enrolled 50 males and 50 females. So while well, we needed to uh, have some category to add those uh, together. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you can edit these as, as you wish. Um, they have shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts uh, that you can, you can put down too. Um, the statistics aren't, uh, you know, maybe helpful if you're working with a team or something and they'll break it out for you based on the users. Um, the guidelines are also something that's uh, fairly critical, I think, uh, just to maintain some continuity in, in how you're labeling things. Um, so while it's uh, attempting to kind of skip over these, uh, it was very helpful for our team to have a set of um, a set of instructions that we could go back to, uh, you know, if we had questions or things like that. Um, lastly, uh, users, uh, you can set 
uh, administrators, uh, annotators, and annotation approvers. Uh, we haven't used the annotation approvers much. I think it's good for maybe bigger projects. Um, we did notice, uh, and Slava might be able to speak a little bit more on this, but we did notice that when we uh, instituted this through AWS, um, we did have a little bit of an, e uh, an issue with emails. Um, so once people register, then you'd be able to select them here. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then kind of, you know, just once, oh, I'm sorry, projects. I'll go back uh, to real, real quick. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, I, so I, I, you saw two of my emails right there, um, and I never got the registration email back. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So just okay. that, that so I, I can explain why. Because uh, Amazon has uh, very strict rules, and uh, it, I think last time it took us like one month actually mm -hmm. to get a verification for mail relay and only for one domain name. So it was the reason why uh, this functionality, well, it works I think now, but uh, still there are some issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, we already dis discussed this and uh, we decided to go for Google. So we will set up mail relay on Google and ju just will continue with Google because it's quite difficult uh, to get something done in this way so if i'm um if i'm not familiar with um with github and uh, uh how, how to run those tools in docker would, would i be able to sign up for this yeah so um so so the good thing because slava set this up on on um corona wise uh as, as a corona wise service uh, you should just be able to go to this website, log in, create a project if you need one. Um, I, I guess Slava or I could or can set, um, you know, administrative privileges so that you could you could uh, yeah. project uh, of your own and manage whatever team that is is handling those annotations so that you don't have to set it up. Um, if you wanted to set it up locally. Um, you can just you can simply go to the Docker repository uh, on GitHub, and it, it has buttons for you to just. I mean, you, you literally just click the one that you want. Uh, I deployed it on Heroku in ten minutes yesterday. You just click that, log into Heroku, and um, and. Uh, Quick and question: Why it. why would uh, someone need to to deploy it locally if we run it on on our infrastructure? I don't think they would need to. Um, I, I think that's the benefit that Slava's already gone through all the work to, to do it. Uh, so ba basically, yeah, but, but basically a contribution, for example, for AVS, uh, I mean, um, the kind of um, GitHub, if you'll read it, uh, it has uh, deployment on AVS. So it was done by us. Hmm. I get, so I'm just wondering, so, so this uh, this call was, was precipitated by the meeting yesterday with Camarades and I guess mm -hmm. the overall effort to further the um, annotation of, uh, of of text documents. So I'm just wondering if somebody from well, I guess question number one is that the people that are going to that would would use a tool like this are they all going to be sophisticated enough to be able to figure this out? Um, and if not. You know, if somebody at Takano wants to help out with this, but they are not really that familiar with how to, you know, get into GitHub and Docker and all this stuff, would they be able to enroll and, and start to work? I see. I see. Yeah. yeah so this is what we discussed yesterday. So first, they should publish uh, their data sets uh, on our dataverse, and uh, we'll be able just to get. Uh, all data and to, to put uh, inside of uh, uh, the Kana. So after we'll manage to get uh, research questions, it will be next step, just to get other data sets. Okay. So and uh, in principle, in principle, it should be automated process. So every time, then they'll update data. So it should be automated process pinned up, and uh, it should uh, get all updates uh, in, in the Kana. And as far as usability, um, and I think 
uh, of all of the services that, that I took a look at, DuckOno was definitely a, one of the easier ones. So I mean, for, for the typical person, they're gonna come in, they're gonna click on their project uh, and they start annotating, you know? Whoever's the project manager already has all of these labels set up. Um, they, have, they have any guidelines set up already. Um, and so they're, they're just clicking through here. Uh, you know, to find the data that they want to annotate. Um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward for, for most people. Um, I just, I wasn't quite aware of, of the context. So uh, that's, that's good enough. Okay. No, that, that's fine. I just, I've, obviously, I don't have a complete understanding um, of the entire, I guess, let's call it ecosystem. But um, so anybody that comes here to use this, it's going to be somebody that we're already interacting with, right? It's, it's going to be some, somebody like Camarades that we've already have, had an ex extensive discussions with, right? It's not going to be yep. uh, just a random team that has, has found this wants to use it, right? Mm, so ba basically the idea was just to get kind of genetic uh, infrastructure. So if they like if they like uh, the Khan and other tools, they can deploy uh, in their place and basically to just to reuse what we already created. So it was the idea of generic infrastructure. And what, 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 what I actually forgot to mention, uh, the Khan is suitable for different tasks. What uh, Alex is showing is uh, sequence labeling, but also there is possibility to do a uh, document classification. And, and, and uh, uh, as well. Sorry? Oh, and sentiment classification as well. Yeah, and sentiment classification, yes. Yeah. Or... Um... And then I, I don't know if it is related to, well, actually, actually I guess, uh, how is this related to hypothesis? Okay, hypothesis is something different. Hypothesis is a web plugin and uh, it's used for different purposes. So okay. in this okay. case, it's a standalone tool that, that, that allows to do uh, NLP stuff and uh, supporting NLP pipelines and uh, hypothesis. Uh, is used if you have uh, web pages somewhere, for example, web pages with uh, um, COVID-19 papers. And what you can do, you can just select some fragments and you, you can create annotation by yourself without actually providing sequences or labels. Okay. So this, uh, so I would say it's another level of uh, data annota annotation. It's top level. Okay. Does that make sense, Matan? Yeah, yeah. No, my, my understanding has definitely been improved um, within the last 10 minutes, certainly. Good. Good. And the good thing about hypothesis, uh, because you can actually collect uh, all provenance information about people that uh, providing uh, annotations. So you can also integrate uh, the annotations in, in, in uh, basically uh, Mm, document description and also after some time it's possible to get it uh, inside of knowledge graph so i would say it's completely different task okay okay thanks for that um archer do you know if the idea was to get the people from camarades to use this or they they had their own tool right well the the idea here i think is to to experiment with loading their data sets into the Kano. And since we already have the extractions, uh, we can actually map them out to, uh, to, to be already annotated in the Kano, right? Like, for example, if they, if they give us a list of 100 articles where a sample size is extracted, we can just load them and um, you know, use these as an example for other people annotating uh, the next articles for us to be able to build machine learning model that does that automatically. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I would say is that we can right? already use our NLP, yes, uh, we, we can also use our NLP pipeline to get all entities automatically recognized and labeled. Got it. So okay. we, we can enrich uh, basically their data set immediately because we already have some some 
experience and some data to do that. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All so right. it's not necessarily about getting the Camerata's team to start adopting the Kana, but more of uh, how do we use this tool internally on their data set to build machine learning models to simplify their workflows, whatever they, they actually have those workflows. Because we can provide a service that basically uh, says, um, is this a primary uh, research? Yes, no. Um, is there a sample size? Uh, yes, no. What is the sample size? And basically run it as, as a service. Okay. All right, that's helpful. Um, I'll, I'll probably, uh, Alex, I'll probably start a lot more, uh, start to work with you a lot more uh, in the near future and have more questions for you. Do we think we can uh, import some of the uh, uh, sample data that they provided into a uh, project and just call it Camerata's project? And whoever can do that, um, can you send the, I don't know, a link in credentials so that me, Matan, and any other people can explore them? I think it's definitely a good idea, but uh, well, people are busy. So probably on Sunday, uh, we will try to make import. Just research questions and awesome. after some, something from Camerades. Sounds great. And I mean, maybe Matan can, can do that if, if we... Yeah, so, so there is notebook. It's uh, very simple. And uh, you just need to put uh, JSON in place and uh, to send uh, uh, API request. And uh, you will get it inside of uh, the Kana. Matan, uh, are you up for, for a challenge? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So, is this the uh, Slava? Is that the notebook that you that you shared yeah. just now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is exactly the reason why you need to install it locally first, because I'm pretty sure that uh, before you will get right uh, content inside, you'll face some issues. Okay. So. All right. So let me just write down some steps for my so. All right. Yeah. I'll install it locally, and then I'll. Looking to run yeah, this otherwise we have to clean it every time, you know, with, uh, <laughs> if something goes wrong. Okay. I'll, um, I'll, I'll give it a shot and then I'll reach out to you guys if I have any, uh, okay. if I, if I run to run into any serious blockers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they shared, like they, they shared uh, the data set, right? In uh, Slack, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think this was a helpful overview and uh, probably a good idea to, to add this to our documentation so that next to the, the Kano overview so people can have a better understanding. So I'll shoot you the, the link, Slava, to add. I would say we, we should add it to GitHub repository. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.